Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to the orientation for Prof. John's English 1A class. This orientation should prepare you not only for how to work within the Canvas shell itself, but also give you a, a little preparation for what an English 1A class is like at the college level. So let me jump right in and start talking about uh, English 1A. Now, some of you are um, going to be coming in from high school. I know I've noticed lately that I've had a lot of high school students come into my class. Well, the difference that you're going to be experiencing in this particular class from your other high school classes is that this is at a completely different level. I don't know how much your high school classes are going to prepare you for what you're going to be encountering here, but the types of essays that you're going to be writing are really different. They're called expository essays. They're reading based, based on not literature, but upon nonfiction. So uh, that means you're going to need to write an argument, you're going to have thesis statements. So it's a completely different animal. Uh, also, the rigor uh, in terms of this class is going to be a little bit more uh, advanced. So you're going to need to prepare yourself for doing quite a bit of work. It's doable. I don't want to discourage you. It's all doable, but you're going to have to have a certain amount of self-discipline to get through the different aspects of the class. Now, if you're a um, community college student, uh, English 1A is often considered these days as an entry-level English class, uh, meaning that you may be just getting into college. Some people put off English because they're kind of a little bit afraid of it, uh, and so they put it off. That's kind of a mistake. Because if you put off English, that means that you're not going to be as well prepared for your other classes as you might be if you take English, especially my class, uh, right off the bat. So the reason that I say that is that uh, I like to tell my students in this class that it's the most important class that you're going to be taking in college. Now, why do I say that? Well, the reason is that uh, this particular class prepares you for everything else that you do in college. Uh, you need to do a lot of reading. You need to have good reading comprehension. You're going to be doing writing based on that reading. So other classes are going to have you be reading a lot of stuff, and then they're going to say, write something about that. And so this class has that kind of stuff built right into the class. And uh, another thing I want to tell you about that is that the way that I've structured this class is based on all the best research uh, that Let's, let's me know how to teach you in the best way that you can learn this. I was prepared well for it. I took the uh, uh, English composition course at uh, San Francisco State that actually is a four uh, course uh, graduate level uh, that teaches you how to teach uh, this kind of stuff. So I'm very well aware of all the best ways to teach it and I've incorporated all those best practices into this particular show. So uh, that's a kind of a heads up on the English 1A. So let's jump right in and let me share my screen with you and show you something about uh, the Canvas shell so that you can be familiar with it and you can uh, better use, use it. I'm going to share my screen. So this is the uh, student view of the uh, home page. It's called a home page. So you can see up here at the upper left-hand corner, uh, this is your sort of navigation links. So uh, to get into the meat of the course, where you're going to find all of the different things that you have to do, the weekly modules and all of the different support modules, extra credit modules, et cetera, um, then you're going to click on modules. And I'll show you real quick where they are. That's the modules. But I'm going to jump back so I can show you more about this home page. Uh, so grades, to check out your grades, go in here, and you're going to see what your grades are for any particular assignment. Now, I want to caution you. A lot of students, they get really freaked out at the beginning of the semester. Maybe they didn't so, do so well on an early grade, and it's brought your average grade for what you've done so far in, like, you know, a fifth of the way through or something. And, and the final grade, which comes at the end, looks like it's a C or a D, and they get all freaked out. Well, there's so many different assignments that that is just an average for that point in the semester. So don't freak out about that. Uh, and if you have any questions, just let me know. But those are where you're going to find the grades. Here's where you're going to get at the syllabus. And let's go over the syllabus so that you know what your expectations are and what my expectations are of you are. It's kind of like a contract between, between you and me. So um, 
up here is my website that I don't really use that that much, but it's for your information, if you want to go there, you could check out what I used to use. There's a lot of interesting stuff in there for you to look at, uh, including my Spanish site. I learned Spanish when I went back to school and uh, I actually created a Spanish site. So if you're in a Spanish class, you might uh, be interested in looking at that. Um, required text, course description, all of the stuff I want you to read at some point. It's, it's uh, an assignment for you to, to do. So I want you to read it all. I'm not going to go through it all right now. I don't have time. Um, but the required text, I just want to let you know that you don't have to buy anything for this class. I mean, that's a, a big uh, advantage for a lot of students. They really thank me for that because books can be so expensive in college. I have incorporated all of the reading and all of the videos and viewing right into the shell itself. So you don't have to buy anything for it, uh, for the class itself. Um, the uh, student learning outcomes are here, what you'll be able to do, uh, and I incorporate those into the modules, attendance and participation. Um, of course, this is an online class. There are no scheduled uh, Zooms where you have to actually be present. Uh, at when, when the Zoom is actually happening. So you don't have to worry about that. It's all um, asynchronous. So that means that, it, that you don't have to be there at the same time as me. So don't worry about having to schedule anything uh, because we don't do any of that in this particular class. Uh, I say don't work on a cell phone. Uh, if that's all you've got, then you've got to, but it's gonna be a big disadvantage if you have to do it on a cell phone. Um, read all of this rest of stuff about revisions and essays and discussion posts. Discussion posts create the meat of this class. Um, you're gonna see down here that it's 50% of your grade. So put everything you got into those discussion posts because they really make a huge difference in terms of your grade and also for your progress in the class. I mean, that's what it's all about. It's about learning, and making progress. That's what I want to focus on uh, rather than grades. So down here, speaking of grades, this is what your grade is made up of. Um, the summary that we start off with is 10% of your grade. Now this summary, it's a um, summary of a very, very complicated article and it's more going to be the most complicated thing you read all semester long. So I don't want you to be discouraged by how complex it is, how hard it is to understand. But it's that way for a particular reason. I want you to be able to realize that sometimes you don't get things the first time you read them. You may need to read it through two, three, four times. And I've got a lot of support built in for exactly what's going on with this summary. So you need to take it step by step by step. And uh, that's part of what I'm going to be talking about later on in terms of how you actually work within the modules themselves. Three essays, 25% of the grade, discussion posts, a whopping 50% of the grade, quizzes and homework 10, and the final exam is 5% of your grade. Now, a little bit of background on how I grade. I, I'm, I don't believe in being really harsh in terms of the grades. If you score a, an 89, uh, I'm not gonna insist on giving you a B because that's the numbers that you got. I like to grade up. If you could see me now, you'd see my thumbs up pointing upward. I like to grade up. I like to give the best grade I possibly can. So if you get a high B, I'm going to give you an A in the class. If you get a high C, I'm going to give you a B in the class and so on. And uh, most people, I'm going to give a C to. I, I don't like to fail people at all. I'm really opposed to failing people, especially at this point in our lives when we've got so much to contend with. I know that US students, Oakland students especially, have a lot to contend with in their personal lives. So I don't like to be failing people. So um, you should know that most people are gonna be getting a C or better. Now to get a B or an A, you're gonna have to work and you're gonna have to earn it, but the C uh, comes pretty easily. Okay, so that's your syllabus. Anybody has any questions about your syllabus, you make sure you let me know. So I'm gonna go back home and we're gonna check out other things on this home page for you. Now this, um, this a painting here, it's a picture of a painting, um, is an extra credit opportunity for you, an early extra credit opportunity. So it's under the early extra credit module in the uh, modules. And uh, it's a, a critical analysis of this particular painting. So you'd need to take a close look at this painting and say, okay, what could this possibly mean? What could the artist have tried to convey to us? It's not all, actually what they are trying to do, but what do you take out of it? And so here's the extra credit link to going to that. Now, down here, I've got some uh, links here on civil disobedience, one on powerful people. And then I say a few things about the class. And I do talk about the fact that this is 
um, the theme for this class is um, social justice. And so I'm very keen on you know, making people aware of how we got to the point we are at in this um, country in terms of uh, you know, uh, what we're doing to people, uh, how uh, you know, some people are treated better than other people, uh, which relates to the Black Lives Matter website, um, but, uh, and how we can better that situation uh, and how I'm trying to enlist you all as my army out there to make things better so that people don't have to live lives that are they're, they're feeling like they're oppressed. So down here, uh, if you wanna learn a little bit more about me, there's a link up here about uh, my educational past. Down here is how you uh, get in touch with me in terms of communication. Um, I'm very keen on Zoom. I mean, we're in right now, we're in a Zoom. Uh, nobody's on the other end of it, but still it's, uh, I'm using the Zoom app to do this. Um, so uh, this is how you can get in touch with me. Um, I like to do it at 11.30 or four. Um, uh, but if you can't make those times, you just let me know when you can. And if you wanna do a Zoom, you just go here and this is how you're gonna connect three different ways to hook up to it. Um, the other way is uh, actually a Google voice phone number. This is the number that you would call uh, and uh, then it's gonna connect to my cell phone. Uh, and then once you do that, then I can hook up with you and we can have a discussion over the phone if you have a question that's best uh, done uh, personally one-on-one. -on -one. And the other uh, way to get in touch with me, and I'm very keen on emails. I'll, if you send me an email, I, I uh, you know, uh, we'll answer it unless something weird happens. I'll answer an email within 24 hours, but usually a lot sooner than that. Usually it's within an hour or two or uh, four hours at the most. But I check my email morning and night and parts of time during the day. And when I find an email, I get right back to you. The thing about email that's not so great is that it's very easy to misunderstand what you are asking me or what I'm discussing with you. And I try and answer something and you didn't mean, to, you didn't mean that. So misunderstandings occur. If you send me an email, you want an answer to something, be very specific about what you want and then I can answer your specific question. If you're asking me about something in the modules, say where it came from, what, which date, which site, which assignment, and then I can answer about that particular assignment. And then there's the Canvas chat tool. This is a synchronous uh, tool, and we can decide that we want to meet at a particular time, we both get here at the same time, and then we can do a chat. So that's better than email because then we're both there at the same time. If I don't understand what you're saying, I can say, well, what did you mean by that? And you can get back to me and it, and it works really well. Okay, so um, just about finished. And this is the class orientation module. And down here are some uh, guides, Canvas guides on how to do different things. Canvas is very good about uh, giving you support for everything that you do within Canvas. So you, if you want to, you can check those out. So uh, let me switch to the, um, the instructor view so that I can go into the modules and uh, I can show you what's going on with the modules. So up here at the top is my video library. I've got a lot of different really cool videos for you to watch uh, if you're interested in some of these. These relate to uh, the theme of social uh, justice and also to some things that we'll be doing in the class. So I know you don't have a lot of extra time, but if you do find that something in here piques your interest, take a look at it and uh, see if you might want to view some of these videos. Uh, some of them, a few of them are also in the actual modules themselves and I repeat them and have them up there. So the next module that you'll see here is the student orientation. Um, this is the Peralta orientation. And uh, these are the ones from me, how to get support, help from your instructor. This, I've already talked to you a little bit about that, how important it is if you need help to contact me. Don't sit back and get a bad grade and just sort of shine it on and say, oh, well, that's in the bank. Uh, let me see if uh, what happens next time. Find out what happened. Get in touch with me. Uh, I can help you. Uh, so make sure you get help from me. And these are the different ways that you can do it. Canvas in this class, you can read that one. None of these are assignments, but they're all very good for you to go through to find out what's going on. This is one that I uh, really encourage people to go to, to find out about me because I have a kind of an untraditional uh, way of getting to where I am right now. Um, I went back to school as a high school dropout when I was 45 and a very checkered past, checkered in quotes, uh, past where I you know, was involved in drugs and alcohol and, and uh, doing a lot of illegal stuff. And, and at 45, I went back to school 
And, but I explain all of that here in John's story. Um, this is a picture of me as a hippie with my hippie wife, Mary. We have been together for 50 plus years now. Uh, and here's Mary and you can meet her in person in a video. So uh, check that out. Going back to the modules. Um, so some still pictures here. What's up with this class and a video for me, check that out. Can I turn an assignment late? And I put this in the beginning of each weekly module, as you see down here, can I turn an assignment late? Because people are always asking me that. So if you're viewing this orientation, please remember that yes, you can turn in assignments late. You don't have to ask me, you don't have to get permission. Unless I say uh, due date firm, there's only a few where I say that on, and there's a reason why that's the case. Uh, but uh, most of them, yes, you can turn it in late. Of course, if you want to check with me and let me know what's going on with you, that's perfectly fine. And why things are coming in late, always great to hear from you. How I work extra credit into your final grade, it's very tricky in Canvas. They don't have a way for me to sort of miter it into your grade so that each edge is credit. So you're not going to see, if you do some extra credit, you're not going to see it affect your grade uh, right away. I, I grade that in at the end of the semester. And so just if you're doing extra credits, rest assured, I'm gonna give you uh, due credit for that when it comes time for me to do that. Expectations for the class, yours and mine. Here's another copy of the syllabus, the same thing we've already saw, seen. And so here is um, the orientation Zoom, which I'm gonna put this one in when it comes time for me to uh, see this little triangle. You click on that. If you've done something you want to save space, you can click it up. Then the next time you go in, it will go automatically to where you are. So how to this and that module. This is a really important module for you to know about. Um, here are the Canvas tutorials I was telling you about already. Um, they're really, really useful in terms of how to do things within Canvas. Uh, how to resources from Prof. John. How to get support. I've talked to you about that, but this is in more detail about support and the importance of it. How you and I will use Canvas for this class. How to post a discussion for this class. Details on that. Some people do it incorrectly and then they find out later that they've done it incorrectly and you can't do it twice and that becomes a big problem. So make sure you find out how to post a discussion. I will say that in your first discussion post, how to do that, but this is in more detail about it. How to annotate online. There's a quiz for this. Uh, so that's also repeated down below. How to do Modern Language Association, M MLA. That's uh, in English, that's the uh, citation method we use and the formatting method we use. So that's uh, an important thing for you to learn. How to introduce authors and uh, sources. We're gonna be working with that. How to organize, outline your essays. Uh, I've got a really good outline thing for you to use. Uh, check that out and grammar proofreading abbreviations. I don't use them that much, but you can see what they are. Now this section right here is really incredibly important because I've got all kinds of tutorials on how to do all the different technical things that you need to be able to do in this particular class. You know, how do I work with Word? How do I find Word? Because everybody has access to Microsoft Word. Even if you don't have it as a standalone app on your computer, you can still access it and work within Word uh, because you are a Peralta student. So you can find it in your Outlook email program and I show you where to get it here. All of these tutorials walk you through step by step by having me on the side of the, in a picture on the side, showing you with a screenshot, walking you through how to do everything that you need to do uh, within this particular format. And students are always telling me how useful these things are to you, to them. So please uh, check these out look through these, get these in your head about the, what's here. And then when it comes time for you to do that, you can remember, ah, Prof. John has a, uh, a tutorial on that. Let me go back up and check it out. Uh, and one of the great things about teaching online, and I have to say, and now that I'm thinking about it, I'll have to mention this, that I've had a lot more success teaching online than I have ever had teaching face-to-face. -face. One of the reasons is that everything is always available to you right here within the show. When I used to teach face-to-face, -face, I'd just give out some handouts and students would file them away somewhere in a big pile of handouts and they'd either know to refer to it or know, they wouldn't know where it was, or, but everything is right here in the modules. If you need to find like the prompt for an assignment, you can just go back to module number three or whatever it was in and find that prompt. It's all right here. If you have, if there's a lecture that you've heard 
And you, you know, in a classroom, it goes in one ear and out the other, unless you take really copious notes, you don't have it anymore, you forget it. Well, here you can go back in and you can review the lecture and you can see what was it that John said about how to do this or how to do that. So the Prof John tutorials are incredibly important. Here's the extra credit module that you can work on early. Email me something, you get 10 points. Uh, Canvas tutorial on the personal picture profile, because if you put your little picture up in the corner on your personal picture profile, I really encourage that because then it gives us a chance to see who you are whenever you're doing your discussions. People say, oh, that's so-and-so, you know? It's, I can kind of relate more to the people when I see a picture of them, a close-up picture of your face. Not something that I see you in the distance with a full body shot. In order to get credit for this, it's got to be a close up of your face, kind of like what you see with mine. So, more extra credit opportunities. Remember that picture on the front page, the analytical critique of the soul of a nation. Um, that's another extra credit opportunity for you to engage in early or later on if you want to. Uh, so, here we're going to get started on the class. Now, one thing that I want to point out that's incredibly important in working online is that there's a temptation to look for the points. So, oh, I see here 10 points for this. Uh, I could just jump ahead and say, oh, I'm going to just go ahead to the points because I know I'm getting points for this, but I don't get any points for these other things. So, why would I want to do them? Well, the reason you want to do every single thing in the modules is because the things that you don't get points for are teaching you how to get the points when you get the points. You know, it teaches you what's going on and the, uh, you, you apply it in this particular area where you get the points. So if you skip over portions in a module, you're gonna wind up trying to get the points and you're gonna get a zero on an assignment. For example, I've got two different elements that teach you how to do uh, certain sentence level issues like a sentence focus and noun phrase of positives. They really improve your writing an incredible amount if you work with those two things. Well, students jump right ahead to the, uh, you know, the homeworks and the quizzes and the exams. They try to do them without doing the preparation for it and they get a zero out of it. So it, it defeats the purpose of jumping ahead because you're not gonna get the points if you don't learn how to do it first. So um, what I'm doing here is you can see over here, this one will unlock at a particular point in the semester. Well, what uh, I set these up to unlock when it comes time for you to be able to work with them. So um, I try to, I set it up so that uh, when you're working on a particular week, I'll have a week open to you. The week you're working on, of course, will be open, but I also at the same time set up the following week. So there's gonna be two weeks open to you, one that you're working on and the one the following week. So students who want to work ahead will have an opportunity to do that. So I set these things to open up so that they open up the Friday before uh, they're due. So it's um, kind of tricky how it works, but I make sure that you have ample stuff to work on one week ahead of the week that is actually we're engaged in at that particular time. And then at the end of the semester, I open up the last few weeks so that you can work. Uh, if you're heading off somewhere, you're going on a vacation or whatever, and you need to get finished up so you can hop on a plane to Tahiti or you know to Mexico or wherever you happen to be going, uh, then you can finish up your semester you know, don't lose steam at the end of the semester and try and do it too quickly, because lots of times, you know, you can really improve your grade if you uh, work on what's going on at the end of the semester. So I'm scrolling down here so that I can show you these extra credit opportunities that are available at the end of the semester. I don't want you to not know they're here. Um, these are available at any time, and there's a, a very uh, due date that's actually firm, a firm due date, because you need to work with these ahead of time in order to actually proofread for these issues in your writing. I call these proofreading exercises. They're not grammar exercises, although they do deal with grammar issues. The reason I don't call them grammar exercises is because you need to proofread for these issues after you learn them. If you don't proofread for sentence fragments right after you learn how to spot sentence fragments, then you forget it and it never does you any bit of good. So you need to do the exercises and then use them. And then it's gonna sort of cement it in. You'll be working with it. And then you need to proofread for it over and over again. And that way you're going to stop writing with sentence fragments or run together sentences or subject verb agreeing, whatever it happens to be that you're working with. And there's also some extra credit on sentence combining because longer sentences are better sentences. 
Uh, you may have been told in high school, don't write with uh, long sentences, give me short sentences. That's because they don't know how to teach you longer sentences. If you're writing with short, choppy sentences, that's a sign of an immature writer. So the trick is to be able to write with longer sentences that flow well and that don't have those errors in them of you know, run together sentences or comma splices. And down here, we've got some images from the soul of a nation, um, some really incredible images of the pictures that were at that particular um, this, uh, sh show in uh, San Francisco. So uh, let me go uh, out here and stop the share so I can say goodbye to y'all. So uh, that's it for the orientation. I hope you get a lot out of it. Hope you watch to the end and that you're seeing my face right now. If you're seeing my face right now, you've done a good job. Uh, you've watched me right to the very end. And I hope that you enjoy uh, the class. I think that you're going to get a lot out of it. Uh, if you do the readings and watch the videos, most students tell me that they've really um, found them incredibly interesting. A lot of stuff that you get in college is, you know, I'm going to you know, take it or leave it. It doesn't really matter to me. And, but the stuff in my class, students are really engaged by because it really opens your eyes to the way things are in this country. And uh, most students are from where they're coming from in this class. Uh, it really is important to them. So thanks for hanging in there. Uh, let me know if you need anything. Uh, it's been great talking to you, and uh, I'll see you later.